All right, so I'm not sure which one of these videos uh, you're gonna see in order, whether you see the truck running or you see the lift kit video. Not sure which one I'm gonna post first, but this bad Larry was such a pain in the ass to install. There is actually brackets um, that have to go from here. There's like little spacers that go between, then there's a bracket that comes up to this nut, then there's the frame, then there's another bracket that goes up to this side, and then you can put the nuts on. So we finally got the braces back on this bad Larry. And uh, today we have been instructed to install a lift kit. Now this thing has a leveling kit on it already, but we're gonna be doing away with the leveling kit because we have a five inch lift, complete lift kit over here. Comes with the control arms, everything. The spacer plates on the top. Um, so we're taking all of that stuff out of that truck and we're putting in, this was Bertha's original lift kit so we are going to be doing that everything from bertha over to this truck over here so five inch lift here we go first things first um i'm not sure how we're going to do this yet because josh has every single one of my jack stands for uh that truck over there and he decided he doesn't want to show up until one o'clock you can't find good help for anybody right motherfucker uh he knows we leave here around four or five so hopefully we're going to get the motor off of that the hood, the fenders, the fucking everything, but I'll, I'll do a separate video on that um, just to kind of keep you guys updated. But this truck right now, we do have the nice new AC stuff in. Everything is installed. We got the nice uh, receiver dryer back there. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys, this should be the last video you guys see on this. We're gonna be doing the lift kit now. And these lug nuts are in so incredibly tight like these are to be torqued at 140 foot pounds and these were not torqued at 140 foot pounds. It's actually at the point where my Milwaukee's struggling and even with this half inch breaker bar, it's struggling. And these are 19 millimeter, these are 19s. All right, I'm using a six point socket. This is the only socket that you can fit in there. You cannot fit an impact socket. And this one here got stuck. I put it in the vise. So we're gonna do the old throw it method. Throw it at the concrete as hard as you can. This one, I even tried putting it back on, tightening it with the breaker bar, and I cannot get this fucker out. So that's how we're gonna have to do that. Um, but yeah, if you guys know this thing, actually this is probably where it's gonna sit. You guys can see the gap here. I have it up on a jack stand. Um, I'm gonna show you how tight these things are once I get this out. Yeah, this one was brutal. I finally got it, but unfortunately I can't do much about the corrosion that's on the inside. Um, and that's creating an issue with getting these things off. So this one was pretty tight. I already tried to hit it with my impact. It won't do it. Um, so let's uh, show you guys just how bad this is. Somebody really wanted to make this fucker tight. Oh, that was, that shouldn't be that hard. So, 140 foot-pounds, guys. All right, so we started getting everything torn apart. I got the wheel wells out. Um, we do actually have a adjustable track bar, so we're gonna be doing that as well. So he's gonna be getting basically the full kit. No shortcuts taken, no bullshit. Um, track bar included, the control arms included. I am gonna go through here. I wanted to show you this before I started vacuuming it up because these corners are just caked in bullshit. I'm going to be vacuuming all of that stuff out. Um, I know I don't have to, but I'm trying to go and take care of things that, uh, that I can. Also, that was the radiator fix as a temporary. I was actually able to go, they're here somewhere, and get these off a of second gen and these match. So before we do anything else, I'm going to be, un or, well, before I put this all back together, I'm gonna to be swapping that rag out. I just needed a temporary to be able to get it, but that's gonna be swapped out with uh, one of those little rubber grommets. So we got four of them in stock now, two for a uh, third gen and four for a second gen. Now you might be asking yourself, why am I going through and doing all that? Honestly, I don't wanna work in all this crud. Um, I'm gonna get that stuff broken up and cleaned out. Obviously, I'm not gonna be going way back in there, but I'd like to get 
the majority of this stuff out that I can access um, because like one, I don't want to work in it, but two, it doesn't belong there and it makes the job harder and it's not going to take me much. It probably like 20, 30 minutes of cleaning this stuff out will make a night and day difference. Um, you can see down here, I think this is where it's going to ultimately be at right here. As we start pushing it down, I'm probably going to go grab this guy here. Start squeezing that shit down in there. I'll show you guys. Um, there we go. Start pushing all that shit down. So, and then we'll get it all vacuumed out. That way, it gives me a nicer area to work on. I don't got to worry about... There we go. I don't got to worry about any of this stuff falling down in my eyes when I go in there. I don't know how you guys say... I said about how I love doing wiring and electronic messes. Um, so, you guys asked me what I don't like to do. Suspension. Not really the biggest fan of doing suspension work. Now, I'm okay with it. Realistically, I want that to go up in there so I can pull this out. But I do try to go above and beyond. Like shit like this, I'm gonna clean that out. Um, right here, I'm noticing it's already started to uh, chafe the wiring and the bracket isn't there. Whoever installed this did not reinstall the bracket. So I'm gonna put a little tie around that. You can see it's getting kind of old. Same thing with the other side. Um, I'm gonna try to make it not a problem now and just throw a, uh, a zip tie around it so that it can you know, stay out of the way. Um, I've seen customers come in where They've broken this sensor, and it's not a hatefully expensive sensor, but it still costs money. And why would you want to replace something that you don't have to? So I'm gonna take care of that while I'm in here as well. But you guys can see just uh, how much dirt and uh, crud is built up on this frame here. Let me just let me just give you a little look at all that. Look at all that. So I'm gonna get as much of this vacuumed out as I possibly can clean the mess up, and then I also vacuum out these every single time on every truck that I do. That's not supposed to be like that. It's not supposed to be like that. That's uh, a little ugly, but also this isn't stretched on it. Um, if this bothers you guys or worries you, uh, what I recommend doing is taking this bolt down here out, which I probably will do right now if it's a 14. I think it's a 13, but if it's uh. Definitely take that bolt out. In this case, it was long enough because of whoever routed it. Um, there you go. But just keep that in mind. Um, if you're uh, not careful, this can stretch. So keep that in mind. We got the sway bar dropped because we are not going to be able to reuse the factory sway bar. That is one thing that if he wants a sway bar, which I don't run one on my truck, but if you want a sway bar, you're going to have to get an aftermarket one. So here's where we're at. We're starting to get this stuff in. I had to clean the shit out of it in here like it was it was fucking bad i'm tempted to open the vacuum and show you all that but where we're at now um everything is dropped you can see these things fit in here nicely but that's not good enough we still have to fit this motherfucker in there to make it a full five inch lift and then i think we have to also fit the uh that little bushing thing in between so it's going to be even more fun so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do one side at a time I'm gonna put a jack under here, and we're gonna unbolt the control arms. Now, what I do, you guys see that upper control arm, how there's a bolt and then there's the exhaust. Um, so here's the thing. What I do is I take the head off, I pop it out as far as possible, and I cut that bolt off, because for you to take the whole downpipe off is bullshit. And I always just go buy a new one, and then I put the bolt in from this side, so you never have to remove the exhaust. Now. I'm gonna let the customer know about this. I didn't actually see that because I was putting the downpipe on from the bottom, but uh, you're gonna need a downpipe. Um, and then I also saw there's a nut up there missing. So I'm gonna try to find some of this extra hardware uh, as I see things and just quick fix it. I mean, for a fucking nut, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, replace that. But yeah, that downpipe, uh, definitely gonna new need a new one down the road. Um, this is an aftermarket downpipe. You can see how it splits up to a five inch halfway down. So, fun fact. 
it needed control arms anyway. So, yeah. And I think I mentioned to you guys in a couple of previous videos, there's a bunch of loose parts on the suspension, so I'm gonna be able to go through and tighten all that stuff up. So now, should be able to pull this axle forward, and that control arm's disconnected from the back, and this one's disconnected from the front. That one, probably gonna need cut. All right, we're doing all right. I uh, was able to drop everything all the way down. Um, didn't need to compress the springs or anything, just, once you drop the control arms, you can pretty much bring this as low as possible, use a ratchet strap to pull it forward a little bit. Um, so this is where we're at on this side. I got the bottom one in. Uh, I gotta do, this one I'm gonna do last, but I wanna get everything in and then I'll do this control arm. Um, and then we're gonna do the bottom one first over here. As you can see from the ratchet strap, I was pulling it forward. So that one's out. This one's a little, Little tight, but I think we can manage with that. Um, the other one was super easy. But this top one, I just gotta get my impact back in there to be able to get uh, the other side off. But this one was also bad. So we had two bad upper control arms. So this isn't a how-to by any means, but we are now pressing in the bushings. We got this side. Keep in mind, there is two different styles of bushings. Set them over here. Bigger hole, small hole. We are using the smaller hole because that's what the bolts fit. So all I'm doing is putting these in both sides, putting this in the vise, squeezing it down, and then we're good to go. Um, I made this about a half inch, maybe an inch longer than the factory one. Um, so everything's still loose here. Um, we're gonna get it installed and see where the axle kind of wants to like center itself. Um, and like I said, we're gonna, that other control arm is gonna be a pain in the ass, so I'm gonna have to cut the bolt on that one as well. Luckily, we do have new bolts. So if for any reason, one of these don't wanna work, this will probably replace, I think this one, one of these was an upper. I'm pretty sure this one's an upper or this one's an upper. One of these two is gonna replace the upper that I cut, and one of these is gonna replace the lower that I cut. So this here's what I'm talking about. Ah, I think a mechanic fucked an engineer's wife because there's no need for this. Absolutely no need for that. If you guys can see it, the bolt head comes through there. So what I've been doing is I've just been cutting the heads off and putting the bolt in from the other side. It works perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with it. It just, I don't know. I don't know why they do this. It's stupid, but we're going to get it taken care of. All right, so we got both on this side on. Obviously, you don't want to tighten these down until the suspension is settled. Otherwise, you'll create binding. See that little guy right there? We're not all the way in 100% yet on that one. Let's uh, play around with, there we go. All right, so you have two options. I went last night and got me some seven inch blades and a new set of blades because these are shot. So what I do, like I was saying, is we come in here without nicking the frame at all. You can see it, you take that bolt and you push it right through. So, should be able to get that from the other side. Look at that. So there you go. Like I was saying, that control arm was clicking, but we come over here, I have a few bolts in stock, and we match it up. Looks like this one is a good fit. So go figure, it's the only one that I have one left of because I've been doing this more and more. So what we're gonna do is we will put it in the frame this way this time. And no, this doesn't hit the exhaust or anything like that. So we're gonna clean the end up, throw the new control arm on, and then we are done with the control arms. So we're finally getting to the point where I have to start fixing things instead of just replacing them. So. This guy here, loose as hell, you can see that, and it spins, which is not a big deal. I got my 3 8 um, I have to take the sway bar off. This kit is not going to work with a factory sway bar, so we're going to take that off, save the factory bolts. Um, I personally don't run one on mine. My truck actually didn't come with a sway bar, but like, look how loose all this stuff is. I'm going to try to tighten it up and see, but... uh. I'll let you guys know how that goes. And then these bolts down here, I think these were tight, but I'm definitely gonna check them. I'm gonna have to go through and check everything because this is loose here, um, which I'm assuming that if that's loose, then that one should be loose. Um, 
But yeah, this whole drag link is kind of destroyed. So I'm gonna see what I can do. I'll let you guys know what comes of it, but all of this stuff in the front, this one's tight and I believe now. Yeah, we might. That drag link is fucked. I'm gonna try tightening them up and see what happens. And there's no grease fitting on the back because this has actually been loose for a while. It's been hitting here. If you can see the nice little mark right there. So get the sway bar out of the way and uh, we'll go from there. So normally I would reuse all of this stuff here, but being that the way that everything has kind of acted, um, I'm pretty sure what we're gonna end up doing is just replacing this whole drag link with an OEM one. Um, this one was the only one that was actually tight, but you can see the boot and uh, just everything is shot. Um, this one, there's a little bit of metal on metal in that one. And then these two specifically are pretty bad. Like this one's metal on metal inside. So drag link, not too crazy, but I can't align it with this. Um, I'm gonna try to center up the axle while everything's off. Um, the other thing with this kit that the guy had, um, like I said, it's not the guy who bought it now, it's the guy previously, um, whoever installed all this stuff, uh, it was actually rubbing. You can see some rub marks on this guy up here. So the sway bar mount. So while everything's off, I'm gonna go ahead and try to pull these brackets off. We're also gonna check these U-joints while we're in here because I don't want them to have any surprises and I don't want anything coming back on me. But the axle itself, we have pretty much centered up. I'll show you guys, we have that guy down there. So we're gonna get all of this stuff, everything torqued. It is physically sitting on the axle now. We are squatted which we're gonna take care of that, don't worry. And then I gotta get a nut for that up there. I haven't touched any one of these, all right? You see how this one's tight? That's how it should be. This one, I come over here. That's how that one is. All right, so we got all of the bolts torqued down for these guys, and we have the drag link on order. I got one bar, they sent me the wrong bar. For the second one, I'm looking for that one. They sent me one that was too short. So we're waiting on that. We are gonna reuse this one. This one's greasable. Um, and that one is the savable one. This one's not so bad. Um, and yeah, that saves him a ton of money too because if I had to go and replace everything, it would just be asinine expensive. So I'm gonna loosen these up. I'm gonna measure from end to end before I do. So I'm gonna measure from this side all the way over to that side, and I'm also gonna measure from this one over to that one. That way we can get it close. It's not gonna be perfect because I don't trust this alignment in general, but we need to get it at least close that we can drive it to the alignment shop, um, and then that's what we're waiting on right now. Um, I can't adjust the track bar until the wheels are on. Once the wheels are on, then we're just gonna take our measurements and go from fender to fender, make sure that there's the exact same poke on one side that there is the other. All right, so for the first initial piece of the drag link with the outer, uh, definitely cannot go off of the measurements that I got. Uh, the alignment's way off and then we threw the five inch lift on it. So what I did, keep in mind, this is still connected to the Pittman arm. One turn to the left, half turn, all right? So one turn, or sorry, half turn, this is one turn. Same thing with the other side. One full turn, one half turn, all right? So this right here is steering wheel center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this driver's side wheel as physically straight as I possibly can to where it's turned straight down the road, all right? I'm gonna get it as close as I can. Obviously, we can only get it close. It's not gonna work until you actually are driving down the road. It might be a smidge one way or the other. But if I go off of their measurements, the, the measurements that I took from the old one, uh, it puts the steering wheel upside down. So it's gonna be night and day better. I've straightened quite a few steering wheels. Um, what I do is I'll straighten them out, take it for a drive, and after about two or three drives, I can get it straight. But look. So it ain't gonna be perfect, but what I've been doing, so I'm pulling this tight up against the other wheel, letting it fucking chill itself out. And then after it does, I'm pretty sure 
we're not right on the money, but we're right on the money. You know what I mean? Like, I'm pretty sure that thing's sitting straight as best as I can get it. Um, I also, keep in mind, this side's not even connected yet. I'm just doing that side. So, and that is with the steering wheel, pretty much, that's, that's locked right there in center. So, maybe I, maybe I fucked up a smidge, who knows. Um, I'm pretty sure we're right on the money, if not, like, a smidgen turned in. But if I come over this way, see, if I come over this way, it looks like it's turned out. If I go over this way, it looks like it's turned in. So, I think we're, like, meeting right in the middle. Um, I also got the axle as centered as I could, so I was going off of this because it's a straight up and down. Um, and there's like a smidgen of overlap on this side, and then there's a smidgen of overlap on that side. So I tightened down, pretty sure I tightened that down. Yeah, as so I tightened that down, this is where we're at. That's locked down, that's locked down. What I'm gonna do now is hit this with an impact, lock those down and then try my damnedest to get these as close as possible. Now I told him to get a steering stabilizer down the road um, because this truck has bigger tires and a lift now. So I put both his bolts back in and maybe he gets a sway bar down the road as well. Also gotta pound that back in place. Whoever put that dual radius thing in there like had the nut coming out and then they were putting two washers on one side and no washer on the other. Oh, it was a mess, but here's where we're at. All right, so we got it on. I did my eyeball alignment. Um, I'm pretty sure. So what I've been doing too, on top of the string method, check this out, right? So take one eye and close it and then kind of line the tires all up with each other in the rear. You see that? Um, it's, it's not going to get you perfect, but it's going to be able to be driven down the road. That one's pretty good. Um, it, it, it's close. Let's put it that way. And with the wheel straight... Check this out. We got the steering wheel straight. Now there is a little bit of slop. That is gonna happen, it is a dodge. But, we got her, we got her pretty straight, all right? I'm, I'm proud of myself on that one. So, the, uh, we just got word that the PCM is, uh, should be here tomorrow. I've been waiting on that for a little bit. Um, that's kinda what's the holdup been on this, but I wanna be able to show you guys this thing runs, drives, does all that shit. But, PCM is bad. So with that being said, we're going to do the rear lift sometime tomorrow. I'm still waiting on Bertha to come back from the dealership. And uh, yeah, so I got to put the fender liners back in and then, oh, there's the other lug nut. Um, once the fender liners are back in and the PCM is in, this thing can physically run and drive out. And we'll go from there. He told me to check the ball joints and uh, I checked the U-joints as well. Everything looked pretty decent. Uh, for what it is. So I'm gonna put this down on the ground and uh, we'll see how much slop we actually have. All right, so I got busy yesterday, had to uh, had to get some other shit done. So the right front U-joint, the right front U-joint has the tiniest bit of slop. And uh, if we weren't doing the lift, this wasn't gonna be something that I would have found out. But I was wondering why the brakes were spongy and uh, somebody installed the calipers upside down. See this? This caliper should be on that side and this up and then that caliper should be on this side with this up. If you have this brake bleeder on the bottom, all of the air is trapped up here and you're never gonna get all the air out of the system. So keep that in mind, these are directional. I made this mistake about eight years ago. Um, I did it one time. I didn't know that was a thing. And yeah, you live and you learn. I was wondering why my brakes wouldn't bleed. And here, these need to be on the top. So we're doing the rear lift now. I got to get all this stuff cleaned up. Um, uninstall the bottom part of the airbags. And all we're doing is installing a spacer block about yay tall so this thing can sit level. We don't need to mess with the airbags at all. It's literally just an inch, inch and a half. So the bags will be unaffected by this. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'm gonna check the drive shaft angles as well. I got the e-brake pushed down and this is one of the only dodges I've ever seen with working e-brakes. So it's kind of neat. Third gens don't really ever have working e-brakes. 
All right, so I'm definitely cleaning a lot of this mud out of here because I have to work under it and I don't feel like getting it all in my eyes. But check this out. I got all of this, like it's all up in here. Someone was off-roading, but you can see I can't get to these bolts without cleaning it and I don't want to make a bigger mess by, uh, you know, hitting it with an impact and just sending stuff everywhere. So I did vacuum the other side. I think this side I'm just going to go through and do this and then I'll vacuum the top here and then everything else since it's just dirt and just blow it outside because it's just dirt not really a big deal um, but as long as I can break all this shit free and then hit all this with some penetrating oil I should be able to get this um, definitely gonna be a time-consuming task but I'm gonna go grab the vacuum vacuum all this out yeah, you can see like there's even stuff in here look at all that that fucker is filled. So, yep. And then blow this out of the way so we have a nice... All right, so all this is our scrap. This was from the uh, old truck. And these two were the factory U-bolts. So we had to use, obviously, the longer ones. So these are trash. And these four nuts from the old U-joint, the U-bolts, are also trash. So we have longer U-bolts, longer bolts in the center. I vacuumed all of this stuff out. I vacuumed down in here. Everything's tightened down. It's not torqued, but it's tight as shit. So we're gonna come through here and hit this with an impact uh, and then replace this shock that is hanging on for dear fucking life. Um, we're gonna be replacing those with some lift shocks and some shocks that actually probably work uh, would be nice. So we're gonna do that. And uh, let's just skip to the other side. And then these should take me all but like two minutes to just swap them. It's just two bolts. Um, and then this guy here, we'll swap that quick. But I want to get everything cleaned up before I do that. And then we also got to put the airbag stuff back on. All of this came from in here. So swap them out. Bleeding, it's going to take me some time. Somebody did put a uh, too big of a bolt in here. So that's kind of neat. But literally all we're going to do, we're not taking any of the slider pins out. We're literally just... Undoing that, undoing the caliper bracket bolts, and going and switching them to the other side. All right, guys, so this truck is officially done. Lift kit, everything. We're literally, other than the PCM, we're still just waiting on the PCM. And then once the PCM's in, I can fill it with coolant, and we can get it the fuck out of here. And he can fly out from Alabama and come pick it up. It's literally all we're waiting for. So, there you go. She is lifted five inches off the ground and he's going to be getting tires and alignment when he's up here and then taking